right? <laughs> it's it's healthier for you to stand. According to who? You're not a doctor. You nope. don't even play one on television. I hang out with doctors. Who? I, who? who? Name well, one. Like you would know the name doctors a doctor. I hang out with. You can't even name one. Doctor you don't, Wu. You don't. Do you know Doctor Wu? He, I do know him. He's a very, he's a very talented doctor. I apologize for bringing it up because you're right, <laughs> Doctor Wu. He's he's very. If that's what he said. I believe Doctor Wu. I don't believe him, but I believe Doctor Wu. Right. It's okay. You're right. right. You're right. I'm yeah. sorry. He's a relationship doctor. He, is a, he, he knows everything. He does about podiatry. Yeah. You don't want to fight with your wife sitting down. So he's a it's hobby podiatrist. He's <laughs> he's just in defeat. Hobby. I'm a. <laughs> So, so he's creepy. He's a creepy doctor, Dr. Wu. Let's talk about something that's not so personal. Let's talk about creepy doctors. Let's talk about the what? ADJA conference that's <clears throat> coming up. Yeah, September. It's only it's a little more than a month away. We're going to go over there. We get to go to Las Vegas <clears throat> in just like a couple of months. No, it's 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 pretty extraordinary. There's going to be a lot of cool people there that I know, mm-hmm. uh, which which I, lo- I love that about that. You'll know me um, and I'll be there. It's, uh, it's like the second week in, in, uh, in September. Mm-hmm. And I actually, you know, I was going to come home early because I had a booking on the Saturday after, but uh, this is the only time I've ever been excited about the, a booking canceling because oh, now wow. I don't I don't have to go home. I can stay for the entire conference. That's awesome uh-huh. that your wife like thought that was all a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's excited about it too. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. She'll be rid of you. I'm for really a while. glad that she doesn't watch our podcast. You know, whenever we whenever we go, <laughs> it seems like I am so I'm so resigned about gambling. I'm I'm feel like it's my. I've, how can you not? How I can have you not gamble if you go to Vegas? It's my karma that I do not that I do not win at gambling. You win. Well, how can awful at you've got this parking karma? You should be able to take it and because well, getting great karma. parking spots that's a lucky thing. Now nobody gets that but you. You get like oh no matter where you go. So how, transfer true. it. Transfer it into something. Spend a little money. Make <laughs> a little money. It's like you know gambling's like finance. You can't you can't make it if you don't spend it. Well, you gamble, don't you? Do you do all right? I've never done well gambling. No, <laughs> but I'd like to. <laughs> you, you, you support you support new hotels. In I Las support Vegas. hotels. I support many of the Indian reservations that I belong to. I uh, I, <laughs> I support my local bookie with my football pool. I uh, do really poorly at that awesome. as well. Well, you know what? I brought. I, I recently went. You know, I recently went to California with john yes and we uh, went you, to the digital entertainment digital Expo entertainment thingy in, that was about the time First that the, the medical universe. marijuana came out and it was really really no, popular that was years ago oh no, that was another trip to california <laughs> i like that story better but go ahead go ahead no go ahead i'm good <laughs> anyway so he and i got together and we got to talking and he was talking about this amazing experience that he had uh, and i'll have him tell the story about how this came about that he started going to las vegas like once a month John, it wasn't, John Young. No, no, no. My friend Tom that lives oh, in oh, California. Okay. I met up with. Oh, I'm not okay. telling this well, am I? No, you did. So you said so, something about a guy named John. Yes. Now, I went there with John, but I met up with Tom. Are you Tom's following an me old, so Tom, far? And Tom is a friend of yours. <laughs> Tom's a friend of mine. Okay. Yeah. A high school that I graduated high school from. We've been, we go way back. So you, wait a second. He's from, he's from North Dakota. Yes. Like you. Mm-hmm. Devil's Lake. Mm-hmm. And you only got as far as Minnesota. <laughs> Well, he got all the way to some place, you know, with really good weather and he, actual trees. He grew up drinking bottled water, so he wasn't as affected <laughs> oh, as I am. Oh, so you've insulted him now because he's who he's all he's all snooty because drinking his bottled water no, around no, no, you're missing you. the point. It's like whatever was in the water that affected my ability to like you know have as do big things in life. <laughs> Or do anything for that matter, <laughs> you know. Whereas he's had this like amazing career, which uh, we'll we'll talk about. Oh, like, okay. So yeah, he's in like the world of merchants. Why do we want? Why do we want to talk about him? Like, well, why? because he figured out the secrets <laughs> to like both winning at gambling and and what? Why not winning at life? Winning in <laughs> life. So he he doesn't have a job anymore. He just goes to Vegas and <laughs> and makes money. Well, actually, no, he does. But here's here's the thing. Okay, is that is that uh, this is why it's winning at life, right? Because if you can go to Las Vegas and you can eat for free and you can stay for free and you can gamble and win more often than you lose, I say you're winning at life. Well, I but I've gotten free stuff in Vegas as well, and the way I do it is I they just I just spend so much money that they're like, well, he's a dumbass. We should bring him back here. Have a free room. Ergo, welcome Tom Erlinson to because, the show. Okay, hi Tom. How are you? <laughs> Doing well. How are you? All right, let's try that one more Tom time. Tom is from California. He lives in California now, but you uh, you were school friends with Jason, and you guys went to uh, to to high school in Devil's Lake. 
which is an actual place. Those of you who've never looked it up, Devil's Lake, North, Lake, North Dakota. And uh, Tom, like he said, is in mergers and acquisitions, right? Yeah, Tom is in corporate finance. I done uh, mergers and acquisitions for a few years. I did did go. I did graduate from high school with Jason Jones, so I have to own up to that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, 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 I'm wondering, you know, about the red bird there on the microphone, but I guess we'll, we'll go there later. <laughs> the the <laughs> red bird is I the only one that listens to me. No idea why he keeps the thing on there. I'm going to start putting something on my microphone. Would you like him to listen to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, you've built me up a little too much here, but, uh, you know, I, I, I feel really important now. Well, you know, Tom, we want this to be like TV, you know, all hype with just a little bit of payoff. People are accustomed to it. <laughs> well, as long as you're, you're you're ready for a little bit of payoff. Yeah, so, <laughs> all so right, tell well, me, what, what do you want to know? I tell you, well, I got, I like I said, I got totally excited when you talked about how, how it is actually that you came to uh, uh, to actually going to Vegas on a once a month basis. Because you're not, I'm, as long as I've known you, you've never been once one. Once a month? Yeah. Well, once right. a month. How do you go to Vegas once a month and not end up on the street? Well, I've never known. I've never. Well, this is what you're going to learn today. So take Thank notes. Thank you. I'm take done. Notes. Yeah. So, so I've never known you to be one to be uh, like, hey, let's risk the farm. Why not? You know what I mean? That I, I've just never known you to be that way at all. So it's like once a month. Tell me more. So it was actually rather a chain or series of events that actually led you to actually going out there once a month and then pursuing like, well, if we're going to be in Vegas, what are we going to do? So why don't you tell that story? Okay, yeah. So the, the the story there is, and you're right. I never had never gambled in my life. Didn't you know? Nobody in my family didn't know anybody who gambled. Uh, my brother actually got a job working for an oil company years ago, and he was he was out in uh, Farmington, New Mexico, and we needed a place to go catch up with each other. That was somewhere in the middle, and we got the map out and. You know, you could have done Phoenix, but who the hell wants to go to Phoenix? So <laughs> right. we uh, we settled on Vegas. You know, Vegas is right in the middle. It's three hours from my doorstep, and uh, so then it occurred to us, well, that's a great idea, but neither one of us gambles or knows how to gamble. Right. So we better we better come up with a plan. So being the uh, engineering analytical geek types that we were, we spent the better part of three months studying, looking for those games <laughs> with the lowest house advantage. You know how we could go have fun in Vegas and not get you know, the shirts are taken off our backs. And now and you so, know why I sat next to him in high school. Right, okay. <laughs> He's the reason I graduated. He studies, man. I just asked somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, we were. So we were, my brother was even more bored than I was. I mean, he wrote a VB script simulator for craps <laughs> was the game we, we decided on. Well, and, so, and I've always heard that craps has wow. got the best odds. Is that is that craps, absolutely right? Craps, when played correctly, I believe the house advantage is like 0.6%, something like that. So it's as close to 50-50 as you're going wow. to get. When but played correctly, of, the, what, I, 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 I didn't know there was like a regular correct way. And there, there must be, a, I mean, when, when, when it's played really incorrectly, it must be really terrible. There are plenty of bets that have at least a 16 to 20% house advantage. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so, so these, are, these are the ones that we want to avoid. They are, uh, and to back it up one step further, my yeah. father-in-law is a high stakes player, and I so I had seen the game, didn't uh -huh. understand the first thing about it, and I I remember before that a couple of years prior to this, uh, being at a table with my father-in-law, and I was bored. It's about midnight, and and I pull out a hundred dollar bill and was going to throw it on the table, and I remember him picking up the picking it up and handed it back to me and said. You know, don't this is you'll lose it. Don't play the game until you learn it. So, right, right, right. It's like you're just going to lose it, that it, money. It, it won't sense. be fun. And it turned out it was one of those first. You know, those, you hear stories about beginner's luck. Mm -hmm. Well, even though we had studied and read books and we thought we knew what we were doing, right? It was it was my brother and I and another friend of his from university, and uh, we all show up in Vegas and for a guy's weekend. <laughs> and it was literally one of those things where you could do no wrong. Every oh, day wow. we, we went from one end of the strip to the other. Every table we hit, we either broke even or made money. And wow. we're only playing like $5 tables. Don't get me wrong. We're, we weren't betting the farm. But uh, you know, one of those days that's good enough, you look back at the end of the day, you're having a steak dinner, and you're thinking, we should quit our jobs. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like, so they, what are we they doing? They chips at you. All well, you yeah. do is make money. Yeah, but and, you uh, can't. I've had some trips that went the other direction. You can't too, quit, so. quit your job on break even and, and, and make no, a little, though. But for a bunch of guys not too far out of college who didn't know what they were doing, and we still pulled in a thousand bucks in you know just a few hours, and we're thinking, oh, this is this is easy money, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Exactly. Good. It's like all we got to do this is like you know six times a month, and we're set. <laughs> yeah, we're it, set it enough turns, to pay the bills. And it turns out it doesn't really work out like that, but but it sounds good. 
Okay. So now, so uh, now that we've established that you're totally an expert in this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you are an expert. And uh, wait, wait, by the way, we'd like to talk about your the book you've written as soon as we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> right. And anything else you want to hawk or Absolutely. sell. Absolutely. Any any uh, multi level you might be in, <laughs> this is the opportunity to put it out there. This is this is the show right. to do it on. <laughs> right. <laughs> but how can you give us kind of it can you kind of in a nutshell kind of give us like the do's and the don'ts of craps? Like can you make me like a a craps player who won't come home to the guillotine by his wife? If he goes and plays. Sure. Well, all, it's actually remarkably simple, and it's so stupidly simple. And the reason this game works is if you're ADD personality like myself, uh -huh. uh, the other cool. game you could play is blackjack. I don't have the the mental stamina to sit there at a blackjack table and remember to count the cards. And I thought the odds track. were terrible at blackjack, though. I, no, I actually played played no. correctly. Blackjack is very similar to craps. It's just uh, it takes a lot longer for anything to happen. Craps is... You know, like I said, if you're an ADD personality, craps is instant action. It never stops. But if you're looking for things to you want to do and not get in trouble with the wife, <laughs> a first thing, and I've taught classes actually to our senior executive. <laughs> That's ADP. outstanding. I, no I'm actually, kidding. This makes him even more of an expert. See, do you make money when you teach these classes? Because there's where your expertise comes in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, unfortunately, and it was it started out as kind of a joke. Uh, we we used to have a round robin where every time we'd have monthly meetings, somebody would bring an bring an extra exercise for the group to do and i jokingly brought up you know i've got a crap spell to the house and you'd be amazed how fast was... all these senior execs signed up and all of a sudden i had a full house of training. so we spent three hours uh, basing them basically training them in craps but to get back to your question uh, of course yeah. uh quickest thing is bet the pass line you know it, you you could do nothing else other than bet the pass line and what that is is when the when a new shooter grabs the dice mm -hmm. and before they throw the dice put your money on the pass line and you could just stay right there. And what you're doing is saying, I'm betting that they're going to, if they roll a come out roll and it's a four, I'm betting they'll roll a four again before they roll a seven and crap out. Right. That's the simplest bet. And it's actually one of the safest bets. Um, house odds is the second thing I would teach you. Uh, you will see most tables you go to, they'll offer two times, five times odds. What that means is, let's say you've put $10 on the pass line. Yeah. I'm going to put $20 uh -huh. behind it as an odds bet. Because the pass line bet will pay off at the house odds, depending mm -hmm. on the number that's out there. A um, and the true odds is the payout for the odds bet that you put down. So you're you're basically you're leveraging your debt, um, and then you can do come bets. So that's the third thing. Those are the three things you only really need to know about craps. Okay. So um, so to make this so so there's there's, there's dice in this it. game, right? <laughs> there are. And here's the here's the biggest thing Big to not three look foot like a fuzzy ones. Yeah. If you don't want to get yelled at or like tackled by security, never reach out and put the dice in two hands. You can only touch the table, only touch the dice with one hand. Really? They, uh, I know get, I know several what, places that, so that you, you can only like, you can't switch them out with some other no. dice, like some no. little slight hand. Is that I, why they do that? I know several places in Las Vegas where you can only use one hand and it has nothing place. to do with the Vegas. Does nothing to do with gambling. But you can only use one hand in a lot of places in Las Vegas like that. Yeah. You care to elaborate? No, on these I don't. Places? So anyway. <laughs> so the pass line Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. That, once again, don't bring don't bring it back to what I was talking about. <laughs> oh well you can elaborate. No, no, that's you okay. said you didn't want to elaborate. No, you brought it up. On these places you What's go the pass line? <laughs> with without me. <laughs> What's the well, pass line again? So the pass line is craps one oh one. That right. if you are betting the pass line, that's the bar that goes around the table of where you see all the players setting their chips on to start yeah. the okay. starting. Okay. And so game. my question is is that I let's say I put five hundred dollars down on the pass line. <laughs> First so, of all, wow. Oh well, yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, man, oh man, what are you I know a little bit about craps. You know you know, you're playing a five hundred dollar table, man, you're making a lot more money than I thought you were. I'm gambling with your money. <laughs> okay. Okay. Or your money. <laughs> anyway, so let's say I put five hundred dollars down. So what what I'm gambling on is that the very first thing he rolls, he's gonna roll that again before he craps out. The first roll that he rolls. See, I'm not to, I'm not trying to confuse you guys too much, but yeah, what you're saying is this: he's going to throw what they call it a come out roll. It's right. how he's going to set the table. Okay. So there are numbers you see out on the table: four, five, six, eight, nine, and ten. Mm -hmm. right. You're hoping he sets one of those six numbers. Right. If he, weird things can happen. If he rolls a two or three or twelve, you're going to lose your pass line bet. Right. If he rolls a seven or eleven, you're going to double your money. Right. But 
to keep it simple, you're saying he's going to roll an eight. Yeah, and then right. the eight is the point. So when you have money on the pass line, you're betting he rolls an eight again, again, and then you, before and then he rolls win. a seven and craps out. If he okay. rolls a seven before that, you lose your money. If he rolls the eight, you're, awesome. you're in the right. money. Right. Now, a little bit that I do know is as he rolls, trying to get an eight, if he's not rolling, if he doesn't roll a seven or an 11, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, if he, does, if he rolls anything but a 7 or 11, even if it's not an 8, you get paid. You won't necessarily get paid, and I'm, I have to apologize. So you you're, didn't. I've, got, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been playing so with a different you're, game. Yeah, you're, you're, you could get paid, and that's where you get into the whole subject. You can buy you can buy the numbers. You can right. put come bets out there. You can cover the other numbers. Right. But if all you have is your 8, your pass oh, line Oh, just the pass line the eight, bet. That's right. You're only getting paid on the 8. That's right. You okay. really, as long as he doesn't roll a 7, you don't care what else he does. Right, rolls. it doesn't matter. So until then, you right. can you can throw out that I want to see 6. So if he throws a 6, I win. If he throws a, a 4, I win. Uh, but if he hits a 7 before he gets to his 8, then I lose it all. Right. Am I correct? You're, you're oversimplifying, but uh, but yeah, yeah. If, if he rolls the, if he rolls the seven first, you are sol. Well, I oh, am right. Mr. Right. Oversimplification. Okay, so then then step <laughs> now step two was a way to kind of manage your risk. Was that correct? Did I understand you right? Well, the way the thing I teach people about craps is if you picture a sine curve in your mind, the the craps table essentially works like a sine curve. You know, the swooping like this deal. I'll put a picture. The problem in. is. You never know when you get on that table. You never know what part of that curve you're on. So, are you on the downward segment or right. are you on the upward segment? <clears throat> okay. So, there's a few rules of thumb. Uh, first thing I tell people is if you're playing a five dollar table, and let's say you're playing a five dollar table and you're taking double odds. So, if you have that pass line bet and your double odds bet, you've got fifteen dollars on the table. Okay. The rule of thumb is whatever the bankroll you need in your pocket should be seven times that amount. Which is why when you see somebody roll up with forty bucks and throw two crumpled twenties on the table, they're in trouble. Because uh, <laughs> they're not going to so, ride it out. So generally, when I'm playing, if I'm playing a five dollar table, I probably got a hundred dollars out on the table. So I've got to make sure I got seven hundred dollars and just to weather the ups and downs. Uh, because you're not typically going to make a lot of money quickly, nor are you generally going to lose a lot of money quickly. But you are going to definitely move up and down. And no one to get out. You know, I think the biggest problem a lot of craps players have is they get way too excited mm-hmm. when they maybe they doubled their money. Which to me, if double my money, I'm I don't care how hot the table is, I'm <laughs> stepping away. But a lot of people will just oh, or the other side of it, they're down, they've lost most of their bankroll, and they're going to try and they're going to win it all back. And right. It's just, it right. doesn't work that way. Yeah, well, that is the, that is the question that that, that I I want to know the most is if you can simplify that. Answer, when do you get out? So and for my this? rule... When you're winning. <laughs> well, that's very... Yeah, that's actually a, that's a good point. I mean, true. when I'm winning... <laughs> yeah, anytime, right. But when you know, like, when it's, in, when it's like, ooh, I'm going to get in again because I'm on a roll, you know, that too excited thing. Yeah, well, I, I always know at any given time how much I'm up, on the, whether I'm playing <laughs> on house money or not. What I am, if there is a shooter still shooting, he hasn't cracked out yet, when he craps out, if I'm up between 50 and 100 percent, I'll walk every time, just because. Especially if you've had more than one shooter who's made you money in a row, because the odds are, I mean, that seven it's gonna seven go comes down up off the sign enough. curve. So you're talking? Go, are you talking 50 uh, percent uh, of your bankroll or 50 percent of the money you have bet? Exactly. If I'm up 50 percent of what I went in on on that table, and I'll generally just throw my bankroll in. Uh, so if I'm walking up with 500 dollars, I'll generally just take out 500 and in chips and this kind of goes back to I, I know you guys were interested in how the comp system works yeah mm-hmm. i know it's it's changed a bit over the years but that was part of it they're looking at how much you're playing with they're looking at your betting strategy they're looking at how much you're betting at any given mm. time so even if you've got a thousand bucks in your pocket but you only throw a hundred bucks down at a time it's probably not the best strategy in terms they want to but if you put the whole thousand down even if you planned on getting out they're paying attention they're paying attention they're paying they're paying attention to what you're doing oh look right. at that he's, he's got a thousand dollars he's going to spend even though you might not if they see you have it out they, right they Precisely. figure you might so they're going to throw some because the, the one thing i do know about vegas is you, the reason that vegas win vegas always wins is because people always think they can do better mm-hmm. you know people Very are true. not walking away in Vegas, when they win, they don't. If everybody that went in there that won a dollar all walked out with their dollar, there wouldn't be Vegas. 
Okay, people are That's always like, well, true. no, there's ten dollars, there's twenty dollars, there's fifty dollars, and they know that even if you're hot on a slot machine, mm -hmm. that the odds are going to be better in their favor if you continue to play that slot machine, and then you're gonna now your money's going to go away to keep you there. Now they're going to give you stuff to keep you there, like drinks and oxygen and you know pretty girls or whatever they're going to do. Am I right? And I have purchased a few of those three hundred dollar beers in my life. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so right. like, so I made of money. Yeah, I made of money. <laughs> but that said, I would I tell everybody you know, the slot machines are what build the hotel rooms. I mean, I, yeah. I'm guilty every now and then if I'm really bored and I'm waiting on somebody. I've thrown money in the slots, but uh, generally speaking, yeah, <laughs> it's not a that's not a great ROI. Yeah, <laughs> slot machines, uh, my experience with slot machines is kind of like donating blood. <laughs> Only if you imagine them cranking the vacuum up about 16 times <laughs> on the hose, pulling the blood. That's pretty much how I feel about when I'm at a, when I'm at a slot machine. You go to some really weird blood banks, man, because yeah. they don't suck it out of you. It's just... <laughs> It's all. Well, that's what if the slot machine were an IV, were a mm. blood to bank, that's yeah. what would happen. I was saying, no, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so great. So I'm going to try playing craps when we go. Okay, and, and then I'm we're going to flash a lot of money around. And we're going to put a whole bunch of money we'll on the table. And we'll get free stuff, right? We'll put the mortgage on the table, but only gamble with, you know, the half of bucks it. that I got. <laughs> <laughs> So have we learned anything? No, and, and I'll tell now. now so they, I, so in other words, with as far as the, the players club or the, the getting the spiffs and all that, they approach you. They're like, say, we noticed, sir. Hey, well, sir. Well, the, the, one, the one thing I will tell you is even if you're never sure you're going back to that casino, and it's easier today even because all these casinos, some of them are linked together with one player oh, yeah. card, mm -hmm. but always have the player card just because you never know. It's kind of like renting a you know, renting a car and not bothering to sign up with Avis or something. You just, oh, and get the worth, discount. It's worth getting the points just in case. But, yeah, because we used to go so often, it probably wasn't every month, but it was at least every two months for years. Uh, and they do track. I mean, I would always try and gamble at the same the same place, regardless of where I was staying. Okay. Uh, and they do track that, and they do they do send you offers. So for years, I mean, I never paid for hotel rooms or dinners. or I mean, we, we literally went years with, Basically, the gas money was all it took to go to wow. Vegas. Wow! Hmm. You know, then you have then you have kids and things change. So, where's the best place to play craps and drop well, your kids? It's a loaded. <laughs> I'll give you the economist answer. It depends. Oh uh, man! Depends on what do you look for. If are you looking for? Depends on I'm, if I'm wearing. You know, depends. I'm as cheap as they come, so I'm looking for low table minimums, five or ten dollars. Uh -huh. Five dollars is hard to find in Vegas anymore. Uh -huh. really ten is. is kind of the standard, and a lot of places okay. like it's even fifteen to twenty-five. Uh -huh. So I like for a five-dollar table, the Gold Coast. Uh, it's off the across the freeway, uh, off the strip by the Rio and the Palms. Yeah, I know exactly where it is. But it's got uh, it's got great tables, and there's here and there, and in off times, you'll find some some good tables on the strip. I've had. Probably the best best luck there overall, but I've probably played there the most too. So it's uh, it, it, every time you walk up to a table, you just never know what to expect. It's just I I kind of gauge them on speed of drink service is important. <laughs> right, <laughs> you'll, that's you'll so true. Well, I mean, thinking, I've been, if yeah. I'm going to pay this kind of money for you know stand here and be wagering five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, I want to be drunk you know, while I do it. Yeah, well, and it's like, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> wait around an hour for the gal to come back with a drink. So right, it, right. The, the I don't want to cast aspersions on any. There, there are some uh, some casinos on the strip that are notorious for taking forever. Okay, but, now what about restaurants? You've been there once a month for forever. Where's Where's yeah. your favorite restaurant? The well, best wait a place. Before to you eat. answer that, oh, oh, before you oh. answer that, let's take a quick break. Oh, okay, let's do and that. And when we come back, we'll find out the best restaurant to eat at, according to Tom, on the strip. You've been listening to the Bill and Jason Show. We needed to know what fills the dance floor. There was only one thing to do. A music show for mobile DJs. Here comes music talk. We talk to DJs all across the country. Jason Jones. How to pack a damn 
dance floor. Even the cook will dance. And that one girl. Every Thursday at 9.30 p.m., Mobile Music Thursday with Jason Jones. Subscribe today. Tom, the question is, if you, you know, if, if you what's your favorite you restaurant no. in, in Vegas? Your favorite restaurant? Uh, it's very simple. Yeah. It's in the Venetian. It's the Del Monaco, Emerald Lagasse's uh, steak joint in the Oh, Venetian. I haven't eaten there. Really? Bar none. There, and there is not even a close second. What's wow. the best? And, 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 and of, course, of course, the steak. But, I mean, which steak? What do you get with it? What's so yeah, special about this value? place? Other, is that other, why? Than, other than the fact that it's, that it's, uh, it's uh, Emerald Lagasse, which is... <laughs> Bam! <laughs> it may be the most money you ever paid for a a steak dinner or ah, right up there, I but it's one of the it. only expensive steak dinners I've been to where I didn't feel cheated. I thought I got oh. value for my money. So, awesome. Uh, so that said, and I've been I've done all the Flemings and Mortons and all the the chains and sure. Ruth's Chris. Uh, I would hands down these guys, uh, and I'm a ribeye guy. I think you asked what I what I like to eat. So. Yeah, bone in ribeye, uh, some creamed asparagus, give me some garlic mashed, I'm happy. Awesome. Okay, now what so about the best cheap go. meal in Vegas? This is where you go after the craps table. Now, if you don't do so well at the craps table, now where do you go? Where do you go? <laughs> you know, you're, you're talking about that 3 a.m. stop off. Mm-hmm. Right, you get right. something before we hit the hotel room. Uh-huh. And I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I've done Denny's and IHOP work just fine for me. Hey, long live Denny's. I mean, that's my favorite place to go after a workout. Just went for a hammy. Or on my way to a workout. Right. It's moons over my hammy. Is that still your favorite? Tom and I clocked many a late night hour over coffee. Yeah. Talking. You know, while their kids were doing things like, you know, partying and meeting girls, we sat up all night drinking coffee. What's wrong with us? We did, and uh, and yeah, I still do eat the moons over my hammy. So now here's another question. You, you go to Vegas once a, once a month. What is your favorite non-gambling thing to do in Las Vegas? Yeah. Are you a showgoer or what is your... Uh... I like the shows. I like the Cirque du Soleil shows. Just actually took one in uh, last month when we were a couple weeks ago. Which one's we the Vegas. best? Um, Ka was actually my favorite that's really? currently really? In, kinda... in Vegas. I liked that one. Um, they're all good. I haven't, uh, wasn't a huge fan of the Beatles Love uh, no. one, but but, uh, but it was still, still fun. It Are just, you... Uh, are you a big Beatles fan, though? Or Apparently not. Kind of, and I'm not. Okay. And I, that may have been part of it. The <laughs> yeah. only, I think the only show I've seen in Vegas that I was disappointed in, mostly because I'd spent you know, however much it cost for a ticket, right. was the Blue Man. The Blue Man group didn't do anything. Really? For me, I guess. Yeah. What were you yeah. expecting? I'm paying you 100 bucks to throw <laughs> rolls of toilet paper through the crowd. I just, nah. <laughs> 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 and you're banging on PVC pipes. I, just, I don't get it. <laughs> but it didn't sound cool? <laughs> um... It was one of those, uh, somebody in a group we were with really, really wanted to go. So, you know, I thought I'll take one for the team. We'll all sign up. All right. What about, <laughs> what about, going, you're underwhelmed going in. in. What about, yeah, yeah. what about best no money fun in Vegas? Yeah. The you cheapest, the cheapest way to have fun in Vegas. People watching. I mean, Vegas is crazy. I mean, you guys have been to Vegas. You, you can, you can pick a park bench and just sit there and watch the, uh, all kinds of crazy go past. So, yeah, you know, I, we still wander the strip and do the Bel- fountains of Bellagio, and uh-huh. the whole nine nine yards. But uh, yeah, pe- for me, it's people watching. Okay, so that's and one, the opportunity. And I have one more. I, I've got all these questions going through my head. I'm going to ask one more, and, I'll, and I'm, I'm going to back off. But, but because, because I've never met somebody who's gone as often as you who doesn't actually live there. So you've got to have like, what's your craziest Vegas story? I mean. The story where you go, I, this happened to me in Vegas. Everybody's got one. You must have at least one. It's not even that sorted, and it wasn't even that long ago. It was probably <laughs> uh, four or five years ago. I'm okay. trying to remember when my, our friend Chad Zabel got, was getting married, and he was 37 or 38, so mm-hmm. we weren't kids anymore, and wanted to do the guy's bachelor type party in they do those Vegas. There? So well, this sounds we, uh, like the making of the movie, the hangover 24, <laughs> yeah, so you know, it's, it's funny cause it cracks me up kind of like that. So we, we all meet up and we've all flown in from, you know, points unknown. And my brother is sitting on a flight flying in next to 
some random gal who says, there's something cool going on at Mandalay Bay, you guys should totally go. And she doesn't know what it is, but it must be cool. So right. we all wander over to Mandalay Bay and we see tickets are $75 and we're like, well, what is it? And the guy selling tickets didn't really know exactly. <laughs> so we took a flyer anyway and it turned out to be, it was just the beginning of a great night. It turned out it was a, at the Mandalay Beach. They had live live music that night was oh, wow. Third, Eye, Third Eye Blind, I believe was the band. Oh, wow. And 36 wineries in residence and you walked through the gate and they gave you a wine glass and there was food and you just... Went to town, tasting wineries. We'd been there. Place just packed. I mean, wow, packed to the gills. Mm. And we're standing elbow to elbow with people, and we hear a voice behind us say, "Gentlemen, you look like you guys could use a place to sit." And we turn around, and and somebody starts whipping out all this cabana f furniture, and they set up a cigar bar. <laughs> wow! So we're like, right on. This is awesome. <laughs> so the rest of the night, everybody wanted to be our friends because right. we had this whole cabana to ourselves, and they probably who are they? We, who is that? Yeah, guy? we must, must be, be somebody. Famous. So we kicked back watching the band, and, and that in itself was, you know, pretty cool. But about 1 a.m., they're shutting everything down, and we're trying to round up people to, to leave. And yeah. the guy taps me on the shoulder, and it's the tour manager for Third Eye Blind. He's like, you guys want to come to an after party? Oh, my God. And we're like, all right, you know, no problem. <laughs> my so Third Eye is blind right now. <laughs> and I spent the night partying with the band. You know, if you if you held a gun to my head, I couldn't name three songs they had. <laughs> right, on, right. You, didn't, the you didn't mention that when you were there, though. That's I hope. awesome. No, no, no. It was. Uh, we had a good time. Had a lot of fun. But went till four or five in the morning, I think, which is way beyond this guy's bedtime. But uh, <laughs> wow. spent the last two hours listening to their manager trying to get them out of there because they had to get on a plane to oh whatever the God. next spot on their tour wow. was. Wow. Uh, so yeah, that was that's probably my most interesting non sorted uh, story. Yeah, oh, so there are. The, so what he's saying is that that's a great story, but he's got sorted ones that's the, that's that the he best won't share that, with that us. Happened, yeah. Okay, when, <laughs> the worst when he happened was like, oh, strip club, you'll pay me a dollar, and it's in the basement. Let's give it a go. <laughs> okay. How bad can it be? I must really be in good <laughs> shape. I look like I work out. <laughs> All right, well, so you're not going to tell ground, us that story. Ground that right to us. Stop, didn't we? <laughs> so there are sorted tales, is what you're saying. No, oh, I, I wish I could compete he with can't. anything on the, the movie The Hangover. I got nothing <laughs> nothing that great. But, yeah, there are the random strip club tales and things like that. But, yeah, we, we won't go there. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> All right. We'll leave that We'll leave that for the pay-per-view version of <laughs> Bill and Jason show. They have those in yeah. Las Vegas? You can No, we will online here. You, no, you but send I, us $10, we'll send you the video of the Sorted Tale. <laughs> okay, with that. <laughs> better come and up if with somebody sends us $10, we'll come up with a story. We'll make up a story, no we'll problem. Be, and it'll be a good one, too. It'll be all about Tom. It'll be. <laughs> Tom, right. this is awesome, man. Um, is there, now, what's your last bit of advice for anybody who's going to go to Vegas, wants to spend a little bit of money, but uh, come away with a bunch of freebies? Yeah, the I economist's mean, point of view, you know, from that of an economist, uh, going to Vegas, know, it, maximizing fun for the investment. Go. If you really wanted to go off the deep end, you'd do what my brother did. So oh. he was so into it, and some of his coworkers were so into it years ago. Yeah. And I think, Jason, I told you about the line of credit story. You can actually go so far as to take out a casino line of credit, and in his case, I think he took a five thousand dollar line out. Wow. And the way it works is you're basically getting a thirty day interest free loan from the casinos, and Scary. the way it would work was he would take out a five thousand dollar line, yeah. and he'd walk up to the crap table day one and say, uh, I'm, he would write a note for a thousand dollars, and would play with play on that thousand dollars. You know, he might only lose 50 bucks, maybe he's up, but he would take whatever chips he had left that session, put them in his safe back in his hotel room, would never play with those again, rinse and repeat oh. the entire time you're in Vegas. So you've used all $5,000, so you may actually be up on the house, but from the casino's point of view, you've lost it you, all. You've burned through five grand because he would be, you know, you'd pocket chips. It's getting harder to do now. They're, they're using the RFID chips inside their chips now, so oh, they know. Oh, sure. But in the, it, back in those days, you know, you could have a thousand bucks, pocket eight hundred, and show an eight hundred dollar loss when you when you cashed out at the end. Right. And so when it would come time to settle up the bill and all the spa treatments and the the dinners and everything else he'd be doing at the hotel, uh, he'd be showing this huge gambling loss and and used to get his basically his trips comped that way. Wow. So, that's that's probably the best way. In this day and age, it's gotten tougher. They've gotten they've gotten a lot better at paying attention. I noticed the last trip I went, I logged into my account, and by the time I drove back from Vegas to Riverside and logged in, 
I could tell you what I on from slots to craps by location what I had wagered, gambled, or lost at any wow. given location. So they they really they track it. Really for your close. convenience, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly. crazy. That's almost kind of creepy, but expected. I mean, I, I, you know, I expect to be wow. under the microscope of, of them, or in my case, most of the time, just ignored. <laughs> Tourist, ignore that one. Oh yeah, that guy's yeah, just that wandering around, you yeah, know, maybe picking lint out of his belly button. There. Yeah, I'm only He's good for twenty bucks another. here. Twenty bucks there. <laughs> Tom, thanks for coming on the show yeah. and sharing all this awesome knowledge. Now it's like every DJ that we know is going to be huddled around a craps table. Are you going? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should make sure he's in Vegas. When we're going to be there, and we can introduce him to a bunch of guys, he can do a class on how to do this, there make him a go. little money. What a great idea. You want to do Boom. a workshop in Vegas? Well, yeah, we, we can do that. All, All right. right, we'll work it out. <laughs> wow. All right, awesome. a few people. So. <laughs> yeah. If you want to see Tom come on to Vegas, you send us a note, Bill, uh, at BillAndJasonShow.com or Jason at Jason, uh, BillAndJasonShow.com. Uh, if we get enough of you that say you want to do this, <laughs> we actually might do this. Yeah, I mean, that'd a, be really send awesome. Send it with a $10 bill and you know anything could happen. So. <laughs> if you haven't That's, tweeted us go. on Twitter, go tweet. Yeah, go yeah. to Facebook and like us there. Tom. Uh, Hold on, all that stuff. Just a moment. I what? What? Well, no. I'm doing the stuff. No, I know you're doing the wrap this up, but I wanted thing. to thank Tom before we wrap up. You just did. No, I didn't. Tom, thanks for being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, guys. Thanks for having me. I okay, loved, buddy. I loved, loved having you here. I, I loved, uh, loved everything. Take care, my friend. Good deal. All righty, you guys have a good one. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Oh mm -hmm. man, that was super fun. We should have Tom come back again. I'm sure he'll have to learn how to gamble or be good at gambling on something else, and then he'll come and tell us. I that. think he, what he's gambling on is reputation, just being on our show. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> well, actually, he'll probably get a lot of requests now for like instruction. Yeah, well, we'll have to send him every one. Yeah. I we're probably starting a new business for him now. And I just saw, I just thought of a new service that, that my wife is free for me, mm -hmm. but but could be like for everybody, which is called the oh. Savior Winning Service. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going. Over there. Whenever I gamble with her and I'm not playing, she's like, "You're done. We're out of here." And I'm like, "Okay," but then I'm, I'm ahead <laughs> instead of 100. All right. So we can. That's that's my new show. Tandy Bob. All right, well, that's it for the Bill and Jason Show, so we'll see you next time. Broadcasting from high atop planet Earth at a rate of 96 kilobytes sampled per second over the interweb in an effort to stop glorifying being busy. This has been an entertainment experience production.